Good morning. Good morning. Tanika Mitchell and Cheryl uh, Patterson. Nikisha Burton. Listen, when you're coming in, come in and say good morning so that I know that you're here. Jalen, so good to see you again. Danita White, my dear, good to see you. Patricia um, Evans, so amazing to see you. Mia, you know I was trying to impress you, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. Good morning. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Um, um, Tony Penix, Latanis Hinton, Mark uh, Keita White, so good to see you. Listen, come on in. You already know what I'm going to ask you to do. Go ahead. Connect four. I want you to tag three people that need to hear a word from the Lord this morning. And then I also want you to share this broadcast. Come on in. Come on in. You know, again, I'm going to ask you to grab those Bibles because today you don't want to miss what God has to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. I appreciate it. Thank you, Gigi. I appreciate it, my dear. Um, Denise Lytell, good to see you this morning. Listen, grab those Bibles. I pray that you've had an amazing week, uh, past week, and I pray that uh, this word will, um, let me turn this down just a hair. I know you all know what song that is because you have the album right. Have a seat. Um, I, I trust that this word will uh, set you up for an amazing holiday week. I'm telling you, the Lord has brought us a mighty, mighty long way through this year. This uh, this year, um, good to see you, Mama Gregory. Good to see you, Bonnie Lucas. Good to see you. And so today, um, I believe that this word is really just going to usher you into a great Thanksgiving holiday and a great week. Um, Herman Jones, good to see you this morning. I know you've been taking great care of your boo. So we thank God for you. Um, our prayers, if, if you saw the post on yesterday, uh, we want to always keep those in prayer um, that we know as the Faith Fam, those who are avid viewers and um, just supporters of this ministry. Uh, Nikki Jones, we, we're praying for her complete healing. Tina, uh, Koshanya. Um, so good to see all of you. Listen, grab those Bibles. We're going straight way into the word of God because I already know I'm not going to have enough time to really break this down like I want to. So I, I, I titled this um, Praying Like Jesus Part One. So go ahead and grab those Bibles. We're going to the New Testament Gospel of Matthew, the New Testament Gospel <clears throat> of Matthew when you say when you have the word say I have the word Torian I love you my dear I miss you so much it's so good to see however what God is doing in your life love and miss you immensely all right thank you for coming on today uh, Matthew chapter 6 very very familiar passage but we're going to examine this um, thoroughly today we're going to examine this good to see my sister Kristen on Matthew, St. Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to um, commence reading at verse number 9. This is, I, I see you have the word, good to see you have the word, Eddie. Um, this is the word of the Lord. Jesus is talking, if you're looking at the King James Version in the physical Bible, uh, the paper Bible, um, then it's in red because this is the Sermon on the Mount, all right? After this manner, verse nine, after this manner, therefore, pray you, pray ye, our father, listen, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name or hallowed be thy name. Verse 10, thine kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in in heaven. Somebody shout heaven. Put it in the text. Heaven. Listen to what Jesus says. Give us this day our daily bread. Let's keep going. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. All right. I want you uh, this week to keep this as your devotion. I want to, I want to, sh- I want to share this morning and I'm telling you the anointing is on me to share this this morning. I want to talk from the subject praying like Jesus, praying like Jesus. This is part one, because I know that I will not have the time to, to, to really examine this in its entirety. Listen, if you have not shared this, you need to share this. This is fundamental teaching. This is fundamental. This is doctrine. All right. Uh, I, I, I want it, or the spirit wanted me to share from this particular passage of scripture, because I am convinced that although we've been saved, listen, we've been saved for a long time. We know Jesus. If, if we don't know Jesus, we definitely know church. All right. Um, and through this pandemic, God has really had to, um, really expose how much of relationship we actually have with God. I know you've got a relationship with your pastor. I know your pastor loves you and you love your pastor, but, but, but what do you do? How, how do you foster relationship with Jesus when you cannot connect with your pastor? When you can't have a meeting with your pastor, when your prayer partner is nowhere to be found. And I am convinced, ladies and gentlemen, that even though we love God, there are things about the Christian faith that we have yet to perfect. All right. Now we're always move, we're always moving towards perfection. So I'm not challenging you to be a perfect Christian. All right. That is not uh, uh, my task today. But but my task today is to examine one of the tenets of the Christian faith which is prayer. Oh my goodness. Oh, I know you know how to pray. I know your grandmother taught you how to pray, but I believe that there are some people, listen, who struggle with prayer, who struggle with fostering a prayer life. I believe that there are those who are even on the live this morning that really don't even like to pray. It's not that you're not uh, saved and that you're you, you're the, the, the a demonic seed no it's not that but i'm i'm convinced that a lot of times we shy away or we acquiesce listen to things that we don't understand or things that we don't know how to do so my assignment today is to examine the way jesus prayed it's in this text i told you already listen this is going to bless you This is going to bless you. I'm telling you, you're going to be a praying machine after this series. Good to see you, Yvette Yvette and Priscilla. Good to see you, um, Erica Bush Barnes. Uh, You all push me today because I got to get this word out. All right. So it's in this text, Matthew chapter six. All right. We know that we know it as the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus was really just giving a lot of information to the disciples. He was giving a lot of information about the kingdom of God and how we should conduct ourselves uh, to the multitude of people that were surrounding him. He's gone up into a mountain because there's so many people that want to hear what Jesus has to say. And so there's a lot of instructions and Jesus, um, in chapter six, he begins to talk about prayer. We can't assume that just because you walk with Jesus, that you know how to communicate with God. And I come to liberate you today because the disciples didn't know how to pray. Jesus tells the disciples in, in the early chapter, he says, listen, when you pray, Well, first of all, he talks about giving alms. In other words, he talks about helping the community. And he says, don't, don't give just to be seen on YouTube. Don't, don't give so that we can see how wonderful your church is doing in the community. Jesus says, if you give like that, just for a photo opportunity, Jesus says, you already have your reward. You've already been seen of men. If that is your motive for giving to the community. I'm in the book. 
He says, let your arms, I'm in six, uh, chapter six, verse four. He says, let your arms be given in secret. I'm not telling you that you should not bless the community or bless your family or bless your friends or bless people that need your help. But he said, if your motive for doing that is so that people can lift you up and honor you, Jesus says, surely you already have your reward. And in like manner, Jesus says, if you pray, when you pray, Jesus says, go in your closet. I'm in verse six. He says, when you pray, go into thine closet and shut the door. Who am I talking to today? I'm going to help you. He says, pray to the father, which is in secret. And the father who you seek in secret, he's going to reward you openly. So to all the people that have wonderful prayer calls and wonderful Facebook prayer lines. We love that. We love that. But again, Jesus says, when you pray, go into your prayer closet. I'm going to get in major, major trouble today, but it's okay. Because what I have discovered is that all of this prayer that's being made, that we are still missing the point that Jesus wants you to pray for yourself. It's nothing wrong with having a prayer partner, but I'm telling you what Jesus said. He says, when you pray, go in secret. Why did he say go in secret? That takes me back to second Kings when Elisha was praying for, um, this little boy, the Bible says that Elisha went into the room and what did he do? He put everybody out and he shut the door. Why? Because there, there, there are some things about prayer that if you've got any doubt around you, it's not going to work. Oh my God. I'm teaching so good this morning. There are some, when, 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 when God, when you're seeking the face of God, when you're seeking the mind of God, there are some things that you can't pray out loud because there are people who do not believe what you're asking God for and that it will come to pass. And so while you're interceding online and you're praying your heart out and you're sweating and you're crying, there are people who are listening, but they're watching TV. Am I too loud? Am, I, I, I'm, I'm passionate about this. You're, you're praying your heart out and people are scrolling on Facebook while you're praying. Jesus says that when you pray, go into your prayer closet because he says there are hypocrites who really like to pray, but it's because they like the verbiage. It's linguistics. He says that there are people that have, that use vain repetitions as the heathens do for they think they shall be heard of their beautiful language. Oh, oh, there are some people that can pray so beautifully. Oh, they know how to put the metaphors and the analogies together. Oh, and they, oh, we say, oh, they can pray heaven down. But Jesus says, if your motive for praying is so that you can be known for how beautiful your prayer is, he says, you already have your reward. And a lot of people, listen, a lot of people don't like to pray because they figure I can't pray like her or I can't pray like him. So let me just, let me just get online and, and let this pastor or let this evangelist or let this preacher pray for me. And then I don't have to No, Jesus says, listen, the father knoweth what you have need of before you even ask. Oh, I came to tell you today. I came to tell you today. Don't you be moved by how some people pray. Don't, don't you be, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Intimidated. Because you don't have a beautiful prayer like someone else. I'm talking good this morning. You're sitting up here trying to figure out. It, it, some of these people are praying things that they've learned. I saw somebody praying and I, I don't judge people, but I'm like, where in the world did they get this person up there praying? 
Oh, because they know how to put words together. Jesus says that if your motive for prayer is to be seen of men, surely you already have your reward. And so I don't have to bless you because all you want to do is to be seen of men. Yes, Gigi, that's what I'm talking about. And so in Luke, we're in Matthew, but it's in Luke chapter, I believe, 11. It's in Luke 11 where the same story is written, but the disciples ask Jesus, he, they say, Master, teach us how to pray. Who am I helping this morning? I'm saying that I'm helping somebody. The disciples, the people who walked with Jesus, who saw the miracles being performed. They said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. It is not uncommon to walk with Jesus and see the miracles that Jesus has done and still not really know how to effectively pray. And that is what my assignment today is. To tell you how to, pre how to, how to pray like Jesus prayed. Let's get into it. Jesus says, listen, When you're praying, you can pray in faith. You don't have to have the pressure on you. All right. You don't have to have the pressure because your father knoweth the things that you have need of before you even ask. Jesus just wants you to communicate. It's just like a relationship. What kind of relationship do you have if you don't ever communicate with your spouse? That's not going to be a strong relationship. If you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend that you don't ever talk to, I promise you they got somebody on the side. Because any relationship that you want to be a mutual and, 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 a, and a relationship that you want to foster, there's going to be some communication, some effective communication. And that is what God wants from his children. God just wants you to talk to him sometime. Don't hop out of bed in the morning and grab your phone and spend an hour trying to see what someone else says. No, when you get out of your bed, the first thing you ought to say is, God, I thank you. I thank you that you kept my heart beating all night long. God, I thank you that I didn't wake up to smoke and my roof was on fire. God, I thank you that I didn't go into my child's room and look in the crib and that child was blue and stiff. God, I thank you. That's how you foster relationship with God. You don't have to say something all elaborate. No, communicate with God. When you are really in love with someone, you don't have to put on for them. No, you express who you are. All right. Good to see you, Nikki. So, so what, what Jesus says, this is the manner that you pray. He says, listen, when you pray, you're already in secret. He says, our father, which art in heaven. I got to break this down, down, down. Our father, our father, our, listen, our father. All right. The Chaldees would say Abba father. All right. Abba, whenever you see Abba, then that simply means that there is a proper father that is coming behind it. So in a couple of scriptures, you see Abba father. We can cry Abba father. All right. That is just the noting. I'm not talking about my earthly father. I'm not talking about. Yes, yes, absolutely, Latanis. I'm not talking about my stepfather or my hat. My, you know, I, I'm talking about Abba Father, our Father. What are we doing when we pray? We are identifying the source of our strength, the source of our help. We, in 2020, we we got some crazy stuff going on. I heard somebody said, started praying, said, "Oh, universe." We're not praying to the universe. Don't you allow trends to change what you know about God? We're not praying to the universe. We're praying to the God that created the universe, but I'm identifying God, our father. Somebody needs to say it, our father. See, you haven't even identified who you're praying to. And that's why a lot of prayers haven't been answered. Because you're just praying amiss. You haven't targeted the person who can answer your prayer. 
Yes, Gigi. Oh, people will start. Oh, universe. Oh, good energy. No, we're not praying to karma. We're not praying to good energy. We're praying to the father. We're not praying to our spouse. There's some things your spouse can't do for you. No, you need to call on Jesus. Oh, well, that's not important, Sharita. Well, if it's not important, why did Jesus say after this manner, pray our father? Talk back to me. Our father. And what I like about this scripture, let me just, just pause for a moment. I, when I was little, we were made to learn the Lord's prayer. Or y'all ain't talking to me. We had to say the Lord's prayer before we left out to go to school. And that's why a lot of our children are acting the way that they're acting because we let them, we, and I don't have children, so I'm not judging you. I'm just telling, I work in the school system, so I can tell you. They know every rap song. Y'all ain't talking to me. They, they know everything on Instagram and TikTok. They know the TikTok dances. But if you ask them to say the Lord's prayer, they go blank. That, that ought not be so, ladies and gentlemen. We were made. That's why we were, prayer was fostered in us. Because we were made to pray before we left. We, we had hands laid on us. We had oil dripping from our foreheads before we left for school. But now we don't require our children to pray. Why? Because we just get on Facebook Live and watch somebody pray. And now we don't know how to pray. I got to move forward because I'm feeling like I'm stepping on some toes and that's not my intention. Our father. Notice what Jesus is saying. He's very specific, which art in heaven. We have identified who we're praying to and where our father is. Notice what he says next. Hallowed be thine name. We've identified who we're praying to. Now, he says, the man in which you pray, am I talking right? I love it. Thank you. Come on, keep pushing me. Keep pushing me. You better share this with somebody. You better share this. Somebody needs to hear how to pray. He says, hallowed be thy name. What does that word hallowed mean? Hallowed means holy is that name. Sacred is that name. Are you listening? We are letting God know. We're not coming to you presumptuously. We're not coming to you just any old kind of way. No, we are coming and recognizing that you are a holy God. Stay with me. This is going to get good in a minute. He says, tell, hallowed be thy name. I don't understand. I'm not fussing. The ten, one of the Ten Commandments says, do not take the Lord's name in vain. I don't understand how Christians say GD. I, I didn't mean to step on anybody's toes. But the name of God is sacred. The name of God is so sacred that Jews won't even say. They put they they say G and then they put a dash because they leave out that the vowel and then D. they won't even say the name of God. And here in America, we've got Christians the word GD doesn't even slip out my mouth. Because hallowed be the name of God. I don't understand us. That's why you can't get no prayers through because you take the name of God in vain. What you look like being a born again believer and the curse word GD come out your mouth. That ought not even slip out of your mouth. I'm not judging you. I'm, I'm giving you the word because you know why we got to have prayers that are effective. Hallowed be thy name. I'm not coming to God in prayer and just calling him anything. I even have to monitor how I say, oh my God. If I know that it's, I know, listen, I know that you don't mean any harm in it. But, but the name of the Lord should have some sacredness. Jesus says, when you pray, pray our father, which is in heaven, hallowed, sacred. I should only call the name of God when it is something important attached to it. I'm preaching so good. 
I think I'm going to have to rewind this and watch it myself to keep myself in line. You should not say the name of God just in casual conversation because the name of God should be hollowed. It should be sacred. Tell your children, stop them from saying, oh my God, stop yourself. Because what you're saying is I'm, I don't, I don't, it's innocent. I know. But, but what you're saying, according to the word of God, is that you have taken it now as a way to put in casual conversation. But God says, Jesus says that when you pray, hallow his name, hold his name sacred, hold his name dear to your heart. Hallowed be thy name. Listen, I'm going to verse 10. I told you I won't get... I won't get through this. Am I helping anybody? Just, just, just tell me if I'm helping or do I need to stop? When you hollow the name of Jesus, when you hollow the name of God, there's no way that you can't worship. So we've moved from identification, listen, to adoration. That before I ask God for anything, I'm worshiping God. I'm thanking God. I'm, ex I'm, I'm acknowledging that God is God. Yes, Tanisha, holy is your name. You don't want your children not just coming to you and say, oh, hey, Dorothy, let me get $30. Okay, Yana, let me get $20. No, they need to call you, oh, oh mother. And if, and if they really want something, they say, sweet mama. Oh, you're the best mother ever. You don't ask for something before you have worshipped. You don't ask God for something before you have recognized that he is the, the one who raised the sun and said it last night. You, you don't ask God for your rent to be paid before you have worshipped him for who he is. God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. And when you rose the sun of this morning, you gave me brand new mercy. And I just want to thank you that I've already purchased my turkey for Thanksgiving. I'm not left on the side of the street wondering who's going to give me something. No, let me honor God before I ask God for anything. Am I helping anybody? I'm teaching you to pray like Jesus prayed. He says, when you pray, we're doing this in secret. He says, Hallow his name, worship his name, adore his name. He says, thine kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this is where I know I'm going to be able to just park and we'll pick up next week. He says that when you pray, he says, Lord, let your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Now, this is not where he's not saying Jesus let some, you know, a kingdom, a kingdom come as a nation. He's saying, Lord, let it be established that you are the ruler of the kingdom. He's saying, Lord, we are establishing and we are proclaiming that you are the king of the kingdom. Listen. We're not confusing an actual kingdom. Rather, we, we're, we're talking about the right or the authority to rule a kingdom. So we're saying, Lord, let thine kingdom come. Your superiority. Let your will be done. Oh, Jesus. Told you I feel the Holy Ghost. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now. This is the part where it gets a little tricky for prayer because it takes a mature Christian. Listen, it takes a mature Christian to eat, to be able to pray, Lord, let thine will be done. You don't, you don't get to that verse, your second day of being saved. Although you can pray it. But there's a level of maturity and a level of surrender 
that you have to have a level of humility that you have to have before you pray, Lord, let your will be done. Because the danger in praying, Lord, let your will be done is that the will of God may clash and collide with the will of Sharita or the will of Cheryl or the will of Koshanya or Marquita or, or Mia or Keisha. The danger in praying, Lord, let thine will be done is that sometimes the will of God does not match the will that I have for me. But Jesus says, if you want to pray effectively, you're going to have to reach a level in your life and a level in your faith that says, God, I relinquish my will. Oh, well, Jesus, that don't make any sense. Well, yes, it does. Because I'm reminded when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, he is facing execution. He recognizes that I've been disappointed. The people that I've prayed for, the people that I've opened their blinded eyes, the people that I've healed their sons, I've cast the devil out of, of, of people's children. And now here I sit in the garden of Gethsemane, getting ready to be offered up. Jesus says, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me, this bitter cup. Jesus recognized that giving your will to God may cause you to be disappointed. For those of us who have lost your will, who have submitted your life to God as I have, my life has been submitted to God. And as a result, it is nothing for me to be disappointed. Disappointment is an emotion that I experience, if not daily, weekly. Because when you give your will to God, you're going to be like Jesus. You're going to be in the Garden of Gethsemane lots of times. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Because there are some of you that you've said, I have done all that I can do to live a life that is submitted to the will of God. And it seems as if I'm always crying. It seems as if I'm always in distress. I want you to know that you're in the right place. Because anytime you relinquish your will for God, you're going to find yourself in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus says to God, if it's your will, let this cup pass from me. But then he snaps himself out of his flesh. Oh, Jesus. He slaps out of flesh and he says, God, but nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will. Not what Jesus, not what Jesus wanted at that time. Not what Sharita wants. Not what Asia wants. Not what Priscilla wants. I have a path that I want for my life. When you were young, there was a way that you wanted your life to go. And sometimes the struggle is God. This looks nothing like what I saw. This looks nothing like what I envisioned my life to be. But when you have submitted your life to God. You say, God, it's not my will. But it's your will. It's your will. When somebody dies, what do they do? They leave a will because it is the desire of the person who rules that house or the person who rules that church. And, and, and sometimes you'll come by some people who don't leave a will. And so it leaves chaos. But but, but what we're saying is, God, everything about me, I submit to you. And it may not look the way you want it to look. Submitting your will to God may look like people walking away from you. I'm closing the book. Submitting your will to God may look like, God, I gave it my best shot. I didn't, I didn't 
didn't go off of my emotions. I heard you say do it. But why is it looking like your will is betraying me? It's not my will. It's your will be done. And, 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 and so what is God's will for us? He says, my will is that you prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prospers. And so when I'm, when I'm looking at the will of God, when you're a mature saint, when, when you've got some, some years in this thing, <laughs> if you're like, I got some years, I didn't just pop up on the scene. I didn't just pop up during the pandemic and say, okay, well, let me start a, a, a Facebook live. I've been doing this for years. I've always worked in the church. I used to do the cam the video camera in the church. I started in the back of the church. I didn't just pop on the scene. With a word from the Lord. My will has to match God's will. So, so if God's will is that we prosper, then, then my actions are to support that because the word of God is not a magic wand. I'm closing. I got, I got to pick this back up next week because I'm getting emotional. God's word is not a magic wand. God's word is not a lottery ticket. God's word is not something you can live your life doing God knows what. And then you can get up and say, okay, well, this word I'm going to pray and it has to come to pass. And then when it doesn't, you mad at God, you backsliding, you, you leaving the church, you cursing everybody out. They didn't help you. No, you gotta, you gotta facilitate the word of God. So if his will is that I prosper and be in health. So if God's will is that I prosper, that's, that's already set. So now I got to conform my will to the will of God. So if it's God's will that I prosper, then my actions facilitate the will of God. So that means I can't, when I see my account getting low, I don't go and buy a PS5 that costs $500 for my kid that won't even get online and do his or her work. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I, I'm not going to spend all of my Christmas money buying children who've been ungrateful and unthankful all year long just so that I can put up a picture on Facebook that I got enough money to buy my kids. No, he said, if your will... If God's will is that you prosper, then you got to make decisions that facilitate the will of God. I'm in over my head. If God's will is that I prosper and be in health, be in good health, then yes, that is the will. That is, there's, there's no mistake in that. But if my will is, needs to be married with the will of God, then there's some changes I need to make to support the will of God. So I might have to get in the, in the gym because if God's will is that I be in health, it's not a magic wand. I got to do something to facilitate that. Listen to this preacher. Listen, I'm going to help you. We're praying like Jesus. We're not praying amiss. We're praying with substance and with understanding of the scriptures. You can't pray, Lord, I want you to prosper my life. And you're doing everything with your money other than paying your tithe and your offering. Oh, we may have differences about that. I I'd love to debate you about that. But you got to, if, if you're spending your money or, at coach, how do you think God is going to prosper you? If for Thanksgiving, you're already preparing yourself to eat a, a quart of pork. How is God going to keep you in good health? I'm moving on. He says, even as your soul prospers, there's some decisions that we have to make, but it's based upon the will of God. Yeah, who's laughing at me? somebody's laughing. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm really trying to help you pray like Jesus. When Jesus prayed or when he taught the disciples to pray, he's not just saying anything. He's telling you what is effective with the father. He says, let thine will be done on earth. 
there's some things that we have privy to. The will of God is already done in the earth. I mean, in the heavens. So we have to just pray it into manifestation in the earth. Are you listening to me? It's already done in the heavens. Your children are already are saved in the heavens. That's all you that's been prophesied to you that your children are going to be prophets and all of that. Yes, that's already that's already done in the heavens. But what do we need to do to help that be manifested in the earth? It's going to take some work. Because if your prayers change, then your actions change. And you're not going to be able to have your actions change if all you're doing during the week is getting on the prayer call and listening to somebody else pray. Because most of the time they're going to be praying for their family and praying that their life um, comes together. Meantime, in the meantime, your children are not being prayed for because you haven't taken the initiative to get on your knees and say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thine kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Next week, we're going to talk about God give us this day, our daily bread. There's some things that's yours that you should be experiencing daily. I'm not going to get into it because it'll be another 30 minutes. But there are some things that you can you ain't got to ask for it. You don't have to petition God for it. Jesus said, give us this day. Today, there's some things that I'm expecting God to do today. But we're going to talk about that next week. Listen, we're praying like Jesus. If you want to be effective and see some things shift in your life, you better stay tuned to this series that the Lord has given to me. Listen, we all have been doing something right because we're still here. It's no goodness of our own, but the old church used to say, somebody pray for me and had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they pray. I'm so glad they, I'm so glad they pray for me, but it's, it's my time now to start praying for myself and start praying for my own children. Don't you let Facebook live take the place of your prayer life. Don't you allow these prayer calls and all of that, I thank God for it. But if you're not careful, you will become uh, you will become dependent on somebody else praying for you. Are you ready for next week? I'm telling you, God has given it to me. And I know that you're going to be blessed by it. Have you been blessed today? Oh, I feel the spirit of prayer. Oh, I tell you that the spirit of healing is flowing through this Facebook live. Oh, I'm telling you, if you want to see God work, if you want to see the manifestation of what God has said concerning you, I dare you to start praying like Jesus prayed. I'm telling you, you'll see results. You'll see results. It's not my will, but it's the will of God being done and manifested in the earth. Listen, until next week, I pray that you have an amazing an amazing Thanksgiving with your family. You got to be safe though. Practice social distancing. Only let one people serve, one person serve the food. All right. We, we can't just, we, we, we want God to um, uh, keep us in good health. And so there's some things that we have to do to facilitate that. All right. Spray those feet with Lysol when they come in. The soles of those feet, make sure they take their shoes off. Those are the things you have to do when you come to my house. Don't drag that, that dirt in my house. Mm -mm, we're going to spray your feet for you come in. Amen. Because we want to be safe. All right. We want you to fellowship and have great time with your family. But we want you to be safe at the same time. I'm praying that the Lord will keep you and bless you. Thank you so much for the seeds that are coming in already right now. I see them coming in. Thank you so much. If this word has blessed you, if this word has propelled you and encouraged you and pushed you to to facilitate the word of God for your life through prayer. I want you to send uh, a seed just to say, listen, I'm not, she's not promising me a house or a car. I'm just showing gratitude for the word of God. You can't get this anywhere. I'm just going to tell you, listen, I love you. 
and I will see you on next week. Um, Cash App, CD Herring, PayPal dot, uh, pay dot pal slash me, C-D-H-C-C-M, or you can go to my website. Listen, if you're giving, I, I wish that Cash App would allow me to send you an email or a text message I, because I, I just really appreciate that. You all have really just blown my mind over the pandemic. It, you know, I'm used to traveling. I'm used to, um, you know, being in pulpits and being in, but you all have made that burden easy. And I appreciate, no, I really appreciate it. So leave your um, email address or inbox me and say, listen, I'm giving because I want to make sure that I acknowledge you for your generosity. I love you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, um, Nikki, already. Um, all right. Well, I'll see you on next week. Have a happy Thanksgiving. It's the most wonderful time of the year, and I'll see you soon. God bless.